Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. It's Brother Raya. I want to give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. By Hashem Mashiach, Malak Yahushah. Another strong Shalom to all of the mighty brothers that are on the highways and byways, making their body living sacrifice. In the rain, the tumults, the demons, the uprises, the uproars, they're out there standing ten toes down for the name of the Lord. Another strong Shalom to all of the mighty brothers that are not out there as of yet, but they're building themselves up by reading, praying, fasting, being diligent, doing everything they can do to magnify the name of the Lord, to be put themselves in a position to shake the hand and wake up the hopeful elect. Another strong Shalom to all of the mighty Aqua in this thing that actually reverence their husbands, being teachers of good things to the children at home, being quiet, shamefaced, submissive, loving, steadfast. They cook and sewing, cleaning, doing all of the righteous acts of our foremothers, standing ten toes down for the name of the Lord. Another strong shalom to all of the mighty Aquaf that are not married as of yet, but they're building themselves up by reading, praying, and fasting, doing everything they could do to magnify the ministry. Another strong shalom to all of the mighty children in this thing, man, abstaining from all lust, concupiscence, and peer pressure, standing ten toes down for the name of the Lord, man. And last but not least, another strong shalom to the whole entire nation that's on fire for the Lord. You understand? Doing everything they can do to magnify his name. Right, this is going to be an in-depth breakdown on can you survive the wilderness. Now, a lot of men may say, you know, what is the wilderness going to be like? What can we eat? How are we going to be moving? We're going to be on a run. What's going to be going down? Hey, first things first, Jake don't even know that much about the dietary law, man. You you act like you're going to be some type of prophet and some type of man that's just going to get fed by ravens like Elijah, man. And the most I may have mercy on you. But faith cometh by what, man? You got to have works when you have faith. You can't just have all faith and no works. You don't know anything about the dietary law, how to start a fire, how to move, how to look at the sun and tell the direction of the east. You understand? To look at the, the moon and, and tell that and look at the stars to see what season that you're in. It's a lot of things that brothers don't know. And that's okay because we have the breakdowns in the last days and the mercy from the Most High to educate you and to break these things down through the spirit, man. If you don't know, you have to get your knowledge up in the last days. Knowledge isn't always what direction a missile is coming in, man. Who's going to get destroyed first, Russia or EU? That's not always the knowledge that you should be chasing, man. Because certain things aren't profitable for you. I mean, what, what would it matter if you know the end that breakdown, but you don't know how to survive in the last days? You don't know what to do. You don't know the laws. You have no faith. And you're not enduring. You understand? See, these are the things that we got to dive into through the spirit. Right? And let me know if brothers can see the screen. We're going to break it down through the spirit. We're jumping straight into it. Right? Salaki, bear with me. Now, check this out. Now, you got a dietary law. And a lot of people, they don't know that much about the dietary law. And we're going to dive straight into the dietary law, straight upon tables, man. Let me get a quick precept. All right, let's go to Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus, right, the 11th chapter. Now, you say you want to survive the wilderness. You want to do all of these things and be this mighty man. Well, now is the time to do so, man. Now is the time to bring forth that fruit. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 11. And I'm going to start at verse 2. It's Leviticus, right, chapter 11 and verse number 2. And it reads, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Now, a lot of people may say, well, you know what? I know about the beast, man. I know about chicken. I know about turkey. I know about beef. I know about lamb. I know about these things. Well, brother, you have no idea how many clean beasts there actually are on the earth that you can eat. You don't know how many actually clean fowls there are. You don't know how many beasts that the Heavenly Father has created that men have no understanding in. Huh? When you're in the wilderness, you're not going to be able to go on Google and type in whether this beast is clean, whether this fowl is clean, whether this root and this plant and this herb is clean for me to be able to eat it. You got to have what? Instinct. You have to have understanding. You have to have the mind to survive. It isn't just the mind to know prophecy, man. You want to have a man of the Lord that takes care of his family on fire with zealousness, 
is prudent in matters like David, in prophecy like Daniel, and has common knowledge in the elements like all of Issachar, man. You got to know how to survive in this thing. And we're going to dive in and uncover these things. It's going to be volume one. And Lord willing, there'll be more volumes through the spirit. So the Lord said what? There are beasts that you can eat. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and chew of the cud among the beasts, that ye shall eat. Let's dive straight into it, man. Now, you have a species called Belvedere. Now, Belvedere is a, a, a umbrella of clean animals. Now, you may ask yourself, you know, how do you know that? Or what, do you, what do you mean? What is a Belvedere? I never heard of that. You may ask yourself and hear cattle in the scriptures. Now, the most sides are going to name the 400 species of cattle that there are. He's going to break it down by simply saying what? Cattle. And under cattle, you have oxen. You have these different beasts. You have the elk. You have the bison. You understand? You have the oxen, the buffalo. You have all of these different things under what is classified as cattle. Now, let's dive into it. Now, depending on where you are in the world, too. So you may have to flee into the mountains. And certain mountains have different what? Animals. Different places. Different states have different animals. Different climates. You understand? You may be under the... Uh, so-called Central America, you may be in North America or South America, they have these diverse animals that are clean. And you got to know how to divvy out and rightly divide the word of truth. Now, under the species of what is classified as cattle, being Belvedere, you have the American bison, the domestic yak, the heart beast, the book, the four-horned antelope. And yeah, you can eat antelope. You can eat antelope, giraffe, Goat, sheep, chickens, turkeys, quails, moose, oxen. It's different types of diverse beasts that the most are created. And each beast isn't the same. Because you may have a species, and then you may have an overall classification of that animal. Like, for instance, you have the children of Israel, but then under the children of Israel, you have what? You have the Native American Indians. You have the so-called Mexicans. You have the so-called Puerto Ricans. So with un Israel, which is the nation, you will have what? All of the clean Israelites, man. All of the ones that have been washed in period. And then you have Esau. You don't just say, oh, that's just Esau. No, you have Polish. You have Greek. You have Roman. You have all of these different variances of Esau within his nation. The same way the Heavenly Father has did the same thing with animals. We can't look on a surface level. We have to dive in and uncover the things that the Most High has created. Now, under Belvedere, you have all of these animals. Check this out. From all diverse backgrounds and all diverse climates. And look these things up and take notes if you can through the spirit. Now, this is list of Belvedere's, right? Now, they range from Africa, Asia, Europe, North America. Check that out. Now, this is a list of them. And we're not going to necessarily dive into all of them, but we're going to dive into this thing, man. You have clean animals that Heavenly Father has created. Now, the Impala, right? But before I get that, I want to get this real fast because I was talking about the different cattle and the different breeds. Now, cattle is nothing more than what we just went into in Belvedere. Now, you have over a thousand breeds of cattle. So don't just look at that white and black cow, man. That's on the commercials with the milk. Oh, that's a cow right there, mom. You see, on the farm, there are thousands of cattle breeds. Now, you have breeds and you have species. Now, a species is different than a breed. Now, you have Taurus. And then you will have the breed of that Taurus. And you will have, I believe, either two or three different species under cattle which were diversely classified at different breeds. And I'm going to explain that. Now you got list of cattle. Now it says cattle were originally identified as three separate species. You got the Taurus, the Ethiopian Tarent, which is the incline in the Zebu, right? Ranging from Africa and Asia. So you will have a cattle, but not only do you have a cattle, but you have what? The breeds of the cattle and the species of the cattle. 
you may have a, a creepy thing and then it's classified as what a species of this but you also have different breeds within themselves let us go to it go to the species now these are all of the tars animals that are classified as the cattle going all the way down now it says united states so in the united states you have the american angus and you got to get familiar with what these things look like man the american beef american brown swiss don't look at something that says it looks foreign or it looks weird i don't know if i can eat it the american milk and devon all of these different things and the diverse cattle you understand that go in spain south africa spain sweden going all the way down these are the targets then you got the indicus so that's a different kind and look how this animal looks with the super big horns so it's different from the taurus but it's still under the same family as the cattle you got what in ethiopia argentina going all the way down to all of these diverse animals that the most High created man got the incus the taurus zebu and all of them are three or four different species you understand of a thousand breeds that will come out of those and within those you got meat some of them don't really have the dairy some of them have meat some of them are, some of them don't have the meat man. don't have the dairy let me go to this quick precept let's go to first kings Go to 1 Kings, right, chapter 19. So these things are in the scriptures. And our forefathers, they knew how to eat. They knew how to rightly divide, you understand, clean animals for things that were profane. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, and verse 19. So we departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Now you have diverse different times of oxen before him, and he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. So our forefathers, they dealt with the oxen, man. They ate the oxen. It says this, jump into verse 21. It says, and he returned back, right, unto him and took the yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh. So you can boil, you know, the flesh of clean animals and eat them. But you got to know what's clean and what's not clean. Going into all of this, we're not going to read every one of those. But the main one that's in the United States is the Taurus, right? They have a car to call that, man. And look at all of these different clean beasts. Now, when you go to your so-called giants and your so-called food lines, they're just giving you that same old beef, man. That same beef that they killed four months ago chopped it up with the same knife they used with the pork wrapped it up stuff it in the back of somebody's truck man and the meat guy he doesn't care because he gets off in five minutes he's just throwing it in the back of the warehouse man you know what that person that's getting 15 dollars an hour at the warehouse he's not caring for your food he's throwing it right back on the cart and they're bringing it right in the aisle and you're getting old meat you're not getting this fresh beef Look at all of these animals, man. All of these different breeds that the most I created. You got that bull that the so-called Northern Kingdom and the rest of the different tribes and some of the Spaniards, whatever the case may be, they do that bull racing with, the Spanish fighting bull. You got fatness of it. You got muscle. And these are all of the different creatures that fall under that, these clean animals. Now, within that, real fast, going back to under the Belvedere. Now, under the Belvedere, you got Impalas. Check this out. And we're going we're gonna to dive in and we're going to show you with the scriptures and with everything that I got pulled out, how you know they're clean, what they look for, how it's in the scriptures, where they're located, how to do what you have to do to kill them. Huh? Now, you got the Impalas, which are in Southern Africa. And we're not coming from Southern Africa, man. We'll never taste the pop. Unless you hijack a plane and go to damn the land of Ham, man, with a bow and arrow. Look at all of these beasts we've never tasted in Babylon. 
Oh, we had is 99 cent chicken boxes, man, from KFC and Popeyes. I'm tired of eating this nasty, greasy, processed food, man. Nobody has ever had a, a lamb that literally got slaughtered, and within the slaughter, five hours later, seven hours later, it's being roasted. It's on your dinner plate, man. You got the heart beast, which is in all diverse parts of Africa. You got the hollerwort. You got the wild beast, the black beast, right? The blue wildebeest. Now, predominantly, a lot of these animals that are clean are in Africa. They're literally in the Middle East. They're in the northern part, the eastern part. They're not on the parts of Northern America where we are. Look at this. Look at these animals. Some in southern, uh, southern Arabia, the Horn of Africa, the Spring Brook, the Book, the Black Book. Now, you see all of these animals, you got the gazelle. Now you see the gazelle in the movies with a lion hunting it down in its natural habitation, man. Hey, that gazelle meat. Got the Arabian gazelle. You got certain things in Southern Asia. Northwestern Africa, the Dorcas gazelle, all the way down. You got mountain gazelle. Now these are all, you got the Grant Nook going all the way down. And in the last days, when the Most High jack up the earth, as it is prophesied, the Lord said one thing. Let me get this quick precept. And we're just getting started through the spirit. But I want to touch on this real fast. Go to 2nd Edra chapter 5. It's 2nd Edra chapter 5 and verse number 8. It says, There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall all sent out again, and the wild beast shall change their places. Now, a lot of times, brothers just break that down as lions and unclean creatures and tigers, and they're going to destroy you. That's not necessarily wrong, because the Most High is going to jack up these elements and have God knows what happened on the earth in the last days. But nevertheless, the most guys going to have a rush of clean beasts entering into your streets. You're not just going to have that, that sneaky deer that you see once every four months. And he creeps out and you see him when you go into the store and you don't see him again for another four months. Now, these beasts are going to change their habitations. Why are they going to change their habitations? Because the streets are going to grow over with thorns and grass. And it's going to be a place like in the wilderness that already is, for the beast to feel comfortable. They're not going to necessarily behold the buildings. They're not going to behold the cars. They're not going to behold the gas stations and the markets and the many people and the confusion and the gas. They're going to see a place that has grown over with thorns, thistles, grass, trees. You know what they're going to do? They're going to dwell there, man. It says, wild beasts shall change their places and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. So in the last days, the Most High is going to jack up the earth with these different beasts. They're going to change their habitations. Look at all of these different animals. We got the American bison, the European bison, all different kind of bulls. And I've never tasted this meat, man. I've never tasted these cattle. Look how strong this look, man. Look at this meat. Now, you think you get that big hunk at the grocery store. Look at this hunk of meat. It's, it's $30. Yeah, I paid for this $40. That's not a hunk of meat, man. Look how big this animal is. Imagine if you took all that meat from them ribs and you put that thing on a grill and you smoked it up. Check this out, man. In India. So these animals that are out here, these diverse wild wildebeests and buffaloes and oxens and gazelles and also you have giraffes that you can eat man you can eat giraffe you can eat these things that a lot of people like if somebody's seen this in the wilderness you can't just be scared of it. i don't know what it is should i approach unto it is it clean i never saw it before although this is in uh, africa southern east africa you're going to have things that i'm going to show you that are clean that are going to be in babylon then you have diverse types of sheeps. 
and goats. Why well, we gonna get into that too? But under the classification of these animals, what are they called? Belvedere. All right. Now going to a list, we just uncovered the three species of cattle, which are breeds, which are Salakia, three species of cattle, huh? which diversely breaks down to a plethora of hundreds of breeds of these animals. Now go to these links and copy these things down and see where they're originally at, man. All the way, look at all of this in the United States. Now you have oxen that are clean. You have sheep that are clean. You have goat that's clean. You got deer that's clean. And you got gazelles that's clean. Now let's go to some scriptures. Let me get this real fast. Let me go to the book of Genesis chapter 27. Because our forefathers, they ate on a lot of things we don't eat on. Man. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 27 and verse number 7. Right? And it reads, bring me venison. So venison has a diverse flavor. It's very tender, man. Got venison gravy. And venison is deer. And they are a plethora of clean deers that you can eat. And make me a savior meat. Check that out, man. So when literally you have what? Jacob and then you have Esau and Isaac, which was old. Let me read verse one. And it came to pass as when Isaac was old that his eyes were dim so that he could not see. So Isaac, Isaac was a man of the Lord. He has tasted diverse things. He has tasted sheep. He tasted goat. He tastes all of these things. And what he wanted to bless his son with is what? His favor was the venison, man. If you were about to die, I mean, Jake and Babylon would just say, man, give me some cigarettes. Give me some of grandma's cooking. And, and, and give me some weed, man. And, and that's their little good bag. That's their doggy bag on their way out, man. Our forefathers, they ate of the good things. They had real gold, real linen, real cloth, real clothing. These things were from the earth, not processed and, and passed down from China to India to Iran and back up to North America. It says, bring me venison and make me save your meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I have commanded thee. Go now to the flock. Now, flock is diverse because you got many kinds of flocks. So when you read Leviticus, the first chapter, don't just hear flocks and hear cattle because there are thousands of them. And fetch me from thence two good kids and the goats, and I will make them save your meat for thy father, such as he loveth. You know, Judah loved Benjamin food, man. And I think Judah loved Benjamin food so much because we're not used to eating goat, man. We're not used to eating oxtail and different things that we never really had for real till you go to the so-called Jamaican spot, man. And they're used to eating those things in these different third world countries, man, because they have them available. We're shipped to the different part of the earth where now we have to fit in with concrete, with motorist cycles and smells and, and toxins and fast food restaurants, man. And where we from, we had it all. Brooks of honey. We had all of these things that were natural that the earth gave us because that woman was fertile, which was Israel. That's the mother of all things. And she yielded her milk. She yielded her fruit. She yielded her diverse things that you know was pleasant to the taste. And I will make them save your meat for thy father, such as he loved. Right? Let me go back to this. So what makes a cow clean? You may say, well, yeah, I heard you could eat cow, but I'm not sure how to do it. Well, now we got to break it down. Now, cows have four stomachs. Different creatures, they have, some of them have one stomach. Some of them have four stomachs. Certain creatures have three stomachs. And certain creatures... You know, they have different things, like a llama has three stomachs. A bull and an oxen, you understand, and cattle, they have four stomachs. Different creatures have different digestive systems that the most High created, which makes them clean. Not every creature has the same uh, ingestive system to break things down the way other ones do. 
Now you had this cow right here. Check this out. So out of this cow, you have an esophagus. And going down his esophagus, right, you have a mouth, esophagus, a four compartment stomach. So he has a four compartment stomach, man. You only have one stomach. Because you're not supposed to eat your damn self, man. You can't eat, man. We're, we're, we, we wouldn't be classified to be, we have one stomach. We eat, it gets boiled down, you know, it sits there, and then it comes out. But a bull and a cow, they have a rudiment. Now, the rudiment is a parch. Then you have a rectum, right? Reculum, which is also called the honeycomb. You have the omasum, which is many plies. And then you have the abominism, which is the true stomach, where everything will lie. And when you go into these different things, certain ones break down and then they don't let it go to the next stomach. And they don't let it go down and they don't let it go down. It'll get rid of it. Now I'm going to show you that. Going on from there, you have the rudiment. Now it says the rudiment on the left side of the animal is the largest stomach. So everything pops down to the rudiment. Compartment and consists of several sacs. And it can hold 25 gallons. So when it goes down to uh, esophagus for the animal, it'll go down into the what? The rudiment. Or more material dependent of the size of the cow. Because of its size, the rudiment acts as a strong hold back for feed. Right? Check this out. Keep reading all the way down. Let's go to the reculum. The reculum is a pouch like a structure in the forward area of the body close to the heart. The tissue and the reculum from the form, Salakia, a network component of honeycomb, a small tissue fold lies between the reculum and rudiment. But the two aren't separate. Compartments together, they are called the remino reculum. Heavy or defense feed on metal objects eaten by the cow to drop into this compartment. So you have certain animals like a pig, you'll eat metal. You know what his body does to the metal? It breaks it down through acid. Every body, uh, body has acid. Every animal and everything that the most High created, you have acid to break down your food. That's why when you use the bathroom, the thing is just coming out because it's been broken down so damn much that it's just easily just pushed out. Now you have a pig. He'll eat metal. He'll eat trash. He'll eat piss. He'll eat feces. And it'll all go down to the same stomach. Pigs have one stomach. And then that one stomach, yeah, it's broken down, but it's not pushed for what's clean and pushed to what's not clean and rightly divided. You understand? The same way clean animals are. So as he breaks these things down, that metal is going to go down to his organs and his meat and his tissue. Because like they say in the world, you are what you eat. So if you eat a lot of donuts and a lot of fat in their foods, those things are going to get stored in your body. It becomes a part of you, man. The same way if you eat a lot of fruit and you eat a lot of uh, celery, that may give you energy. Uh, watermelon, that may give you energy. You know, these things, you know, they, they are part of you. Now, you have this. It says, hardware disease, you can use magnets to prevent disease or correct a problem through surgery. Leaving it untreated may lead into an infection or possible death. And what happens, man? Who has diseases? Jake have diseases. You have all of these nasty things that these unclean beasts are eating in your system. And you can't say, well, you put barbecue sauce on it. It's slabbed up and it has all of these different things. And, you know, it got sweet baby rays and it got this and it got that. That's not going to save you, man. The taste of it is folly. It's nothing more than a delusion of your mind. The most I give you straight weight things that you can eat that are clean and things that you can't eat that are unclean. Let me go to the book of Daniel real fast. And I'm going to go back to that. I want to touch on this real fast. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. So Daniel's mind and his heart was not to what defile himself with different meats because he knew the spirit that that meat could bring. Man. The Lord will kill you for eating certain things. Don't be a carnal man and an Israelite in the last days. It's not that serious. I can repent. 
I can do this. I can do that. I can eat that. I can eat this. Hey, in, in the wilderness, what if the most I don't give you mercy, man? Because you had all this time to read Leviticus 11, read Deuteronomy 14, but you was too busy reading Revelation 14 all day, man. And when all hell was breaking loose, that's the last thing you're going to be thinking about. You're not going to be thinking with well, the sheaf and, and, the, and, the, and the grapes and coming for the great slaughter. You're going to be seeing what the hell you can eat, man. Can I eat this? What animal is clean? How does it digest this food? Does it have hooves? And if it does have hooves, it's a whole different breakdown within the hooves. We're about to get to. Because there's certain animals that have hooves, certain animals that have splits that are not clean. And you got to dive into that and know these things. It says, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself, man. And we're not defiling ourselves in the last days, man. We're not moving in that spirit. Because these meats will defile you. Let me get this quick pre -sum. Let's go to Judith chapter 12 and verse number 1. All right? Let's go to it. It's the book of Judith chapter 12 and verse number 1. And it reads, Then he commanded to bring her and where his plate was set, and bade that she should prepare for her own salaki, and bade that they should prepare for her of his own meats, and that she should drink of his own wine. And Judah said, I will not eat thereof, lest there be an offense, ma. So Judah was a mighty woman. I'm not eating these meats you bringing out to me, ma. And you go to these restaurants, they say, try this alligator. Tail. Then they then you got the women with the balloons and alligator, alligator tail, and everybody's coming out and everybody's doing all these damn different tricks. The Chinese man is flipping them damn tongs around and he's banging it on the ground and the fire is coming up. And your two-year-old child, she's in the awe, and the grandma, she on her way out. She acts up for seconds, and your whole family's drunk, man. Huh? These different nations, they but wow you with these creatures. That swamp, that crawl, that creep. Right, that are nasty, that aren't clean. Hey, but our foremothers and forefathers, they didn't care about these things. If it's given it to you by a governor, a king, a ruler, a prince, if they're unclean, man, they're unclean. It says, and Judah said, I will not eat thereof, lest there be an offense. In the Most High, it could be an offense as you eat these things, man. The Most High doesn't want to drop down from heaven. The Most High can do anything. But the Most High doesn't want to drop down from heaven to mend you, man. And what am I going to have today in the wilderness? Hmm. And then you just pick lamb. And then like, sheep just come out of nowhere. And then they just get slaughtered, man. A man comes out with an axe. And he prepares it for you and just gives it to you in the middle of nowhere. It's going to be cold. It's going to be violence out there. It's going to be screams. And that day, you're going to have to finally approach into your manly nature. And your manly nature isn't just playing basketball or doing push-ups or going to the gym. Doing carnal Babylonian things. You're going to have to swing an axe in them days, man. You're going to have to get a bow and arrow like our forefathers. You're going to have to pick up a sword, man, and a machete and chop down places you have never been. And have to follow the sun, follow the moon, follow the stars, and everything the Most High has given you for light, time, and direction, and figure this thing out, man. And in case you don't know, a quick segue. The sun rises in the, it says, earth rotates and spins toward the east. And why the sun and moon, planets and stars all rise in the east and they make their way westward across the sky. So as the sun is coming up, the sun always rises in the east. So if you're in the middle of the wilderness and all hell is breaking loose, you're trying to figure out if you want to go east or go west, you don't have to have a compass. Essentially, the Heavenly Father has given every single thing to the elect, and they know it. They already know what direction they're going. They already know what clean animals to eat. They already know the strength of our forefathers, how they fought. They already have the spirit of the elect and faith like Yahushua. The Most High gave it to them already. But then you're going to have men that were so carnal, and all they did was watch uh, multiple wild breakdowns and, and in-depth secrets of uh, certain things that aren't going to do anything for you in the, in the wilderness. 
Now, it's very profitable to know those things. You most definitely want to get built up and know the secrets, but you have to have a foundation first. Your foundation is the law. If you do not know by now, brothers, hey, sisters, brothers, children, read the law. The law is going to build you up to understand secrets, to understand what to eat, how to move in the last days on the earth. So if you're in the wilderness, you don't know which way to go in direction. The sun rises in the east, and guess what? It sets in the west. The stars, which are so-called, you understand, the different constellations are for the different seasons. And the moon, you understand, is for the month. And you look at it, and for signs and seasons. Going back to uh, about the cow, you got the obanism and the obanism. Right, so lucky for the pronunciation. So these are the things that breaks down the stomach of the cow. Now check this out. How many stomachs do sheep have? It says, what animal has four stomachs? You have the prolon horns, right? You have the giraffes, the opitus, the deer. And a lot of these things brothers have never even pronounced or seen. You're trying to figure out, what is this? I mean, can I eat it? I've never seen it before. But the, you got antelopes. Now, four stomachs, as we just ran for the cow, we're not going to break it down for all of the different creatures, but they all have, what, four stomachs. That's spiritual. Four is a complete number. And as it gets broken down through the system and leaves out, it's a complete perfection for you to eat it. And we're holy people, man. We can't eat profane and nasty things. Check this out. This is a livestock of the world.com. It has alpumless, al right, which are llamas, has bison, cattle, chickens, dogs, donkeys, emus, which are birds, you understand, like ostriches. You have goats, bees, horses, llamas, and it's just a different species of a llama, or different type rather. You have pigs, you have rabbits, you have turkeys, you have yaks, right, which is a type of bull. So all of these different animals will give you an in-depth breakdown of all their different species. So you may see this right here. This doesn't look like a, a, a sheep. It looks like a dog, man. Every Jake thinks sheep just look like this. This one right here. Maybe a little bit more hairy. The alfreno. Just pure wool. You see the sheep. Oh, that's a sheep. You got sheep that look different from sheep, man. You have rams, and this is very profitable to know, man. You don't want to see these things in the wild and don't know what to do, don't know how to move. Now, what makes an animal clean and unclean other than the stomachs and a digestive system? Let's go to it. Let's break it down a little bit more. Now, so lucky. I want to... um. You have zebras. Now, zebras are unclean. You can't eat zebras. Now, you can't lust after their meat and start scratching your neck and, and going crazy because you see a zebra, man. And you want to know what that white and black meat under that, under that bone tastes like. Although, and, and, and zebras are like donkeys, man. They're unclean animals. So you have a zebra hoof. Now, you have different diverse types of hooves. You have this type of hoof, which is a zebra's hoof, a donkey's hoof, or horse hoof. You have cloven-footed animals. Well, I'm going to come back to that. And then you will have two-toed animals. Now, you may see a camel. You may see other creatures that appear to have a, a split hoof but they don't have a hoof. They have toes. This is toes. Don't be in a wilderness and you see an animal and it has toes. And you haven't eaten in two days and you're scratching your neck and you, and you slip into a, a mirage, man. And you see Elma Fudd and, and, and Bugs Bunny and they're pointing and they're telling you to go eat and then you start to lust and chase and you start tackling it and, and lusting after unclean animals. Now, these have toes. Although they may eat grass 
and have characteristics of clean animals like a llama. A llama eats grass. It eats clean things. And I believe a llama has three stomachs. So it may have different characteristics of being clean, but certain things are unclean. Now you have to look at it. Check, 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 check. Okay, red flag. I can't eat that. Can't just look at it eating grass. Or you can't just look at it being split hoofed. It has to have the all around package of what's clean and what's unclean, huh? Now, like I said, you have a hoof, but in that hoof, it has to have a split hoof. This has toes. Now, this is a, a cow. Look at the cow. The cow has the hoof and the split. Right, and the split. So it has that hoof and the split. Right, and we want we're gonna jump to that too. We're gonna come back to this. We're gonna come back to this through the spirit. Right, we're just getting started. Now, I'm not gonna read all of these different diverse sheep, but you got all of these different types of sheep, which are clean. And it tells you whether they're in Australia, whether they're in England, whether they're in Russia, the United States, how much they weigh, and diverse of things. Now you have giraffes. Now giraffes are clean, man. Huh? A lot of brothers may say, I'm not eating no giraffe, man. Giraffe sounds nasty. Well, giraffe, hey, the heavenly father said you can eat it. How do you know by its different attributes? And we're going to dive into that too, man. Huh? Right? So we're going to uncover, we're going to uncover the birds that you can eat, the different creatures under the velvet day, the digestive systems, and the different things our forefathers had, man. Huh? Now, before we leave the sheep, I want to go to a quick precept. Go to this quick precept. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. It's Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 15, and it reads, it says, Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates. Whatsoever thy soul lust after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof as the roebucks, Salakia, as the roebucks and as the heart. So the Lord said you can eat the roebucks, the heart, and those are different deers. We're about to dive into that too. And as well as the different birds, because a lot of brothers may be controversy in what you can eat and what you can't eat. And the same way we broke it down for the animals, the mammals, right? And both there and the cattle, the same way we're going to do otherwise. So you have what? The giraffes. All of these different species of giraffe. Primarily down, found in northern and southern Africa. With four species. The northern giraffe, the southern giraffe, right? The Masonai. And the reptilian giraffe. Now, giraffe, now you have the different deers. Now, under deers, you have elk and you have moose. You have roe bucks and you have venison. So they come in these different names. Yes, you can eat moose. You don't have to scratch yourself. Yes, you can eat elk. And I want some moose, man. I want some elk. I want these, I want these different meats I've never had before, man. Where do you find these? You have to go to like some, some fancy restaurant where they serving something that's clean and you never had it. And you're like, damn, man, this is a treat, man. It wasn't a treat in the ancient world. It was everyday eating. It was everyday eating. Right? It says you got the white-tailed deer, the moose, the water deer. Now, these are diverse of clean animals and mighty. And our forefather loved the venison, man. Isaac loved the venison. He loved the venison. There's 43 species, right? It says how many types of deer are there? There are 43 species of deer that make up the family of the Crovidae. Crovidae. These species are divided into two fairly distinct groups. The old world deer, the new world deer. Check that out. 
now you have right before I get to the uh, the deers and the giraffes, they all have the clean attributes. Now, in Babylon, check this out. Animals in the United States, primarily found in the United States, which is spiritual, are unclean beasts. Krugers, wolves. And Kruger is nothing more than a cat and a lion and a lion family. And the Lord likens Esau to a lion. This is another lion. You have a grizzly bear, a bobcat, the wolf, the bear, the coyote. And these are vicious creatures, man. The black bear, the bald eagle, the raccoon, the American alligator. What do you have the, ch the, the chiefest vicious predators in Babylon? The night crawlers that come out at night. Squirrels. You have a little bit of deer. So you do have deer. You do have the American bison, right? What else do you have? You got the bighorn sheep, but you have what? The python, and that's all spiritual, man. These things will devour the wild boar. And going into uh, different pigs, you have different types of pigs. Don't just look at a pig and say, oh, I don't see any, uh, I, I see skin. Maybe it's not a pig. You have the wild boar, you have the wild hog, you have the uh, the uh, so-called uh, farm pig, and they have different places and diverse that the most high placed. Some in the wilderness, some in the Amazon, some on farms, and they all do one thing: they eat anything. So don't see that fur that fur right on this on this pig and not know what it is, man, and just think that pigs are just skinless. All right, let me get this quick. Don't just think this is a pig because you see hair and it's the middle of the night. You don't check. You got the hog with the tusk. So you got to get into this thing and be a connoisseur in different animals as well. Now. And we're going to get into the clean fish too because you got clean fish you can eat, man. Right now, before we jump the gun, right before we get to jumping the gun, let's go back to Leviticus. It's Leviticus chapter 11 and verse number seven. In verse, and it reads, And the swine, though he divide up the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh ye shall not eat, and of their carcass ye shall not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat. Of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters and the seas and the rivers, them shall ye eat. The Lord told you plant upon tables. In case you didn't know, there's a website called weareisrael.org. Now, there's a lot of good things that you could dive into on your spare time to check out. Right? So lock you, bear with me. We having problems, Satan. So lucky, bear with me. See if we can get this uh to come back through the spirit. Can brother see the screen? Can brother see the screen? Say Khan if you can see the screen. Okay, bear with me. See if we can bring this back up. All right, see if you can see the screen now. All right, well, that's Satan trying to take away the word. So, Lockie, bear with me. All right, so, Lockie, bear with me. All right, let me know if brothers can see the screen. Let 
You know, our brothers can see the scoring through the spirit. All right, let me see if I go back to the screen I was just at. Is it going to go black again? If it go black, I'm not going to uh, touch on what I was going to bring out. So long, you bear with me. Can you brother see the screen? Look like it paused again. So long, you bear with me. So we touched on, Lord willing, brothers can see the screen. Brothers see the screen? Right, so we touched on deer, we touched on giraffes, we touched on antelope, we touched on gazelles, we touched on elk and oxen and different types of cattle and bison and buffalo and um, what makes them clean. You know, diving into that thing, but now we're gonna get into through the spirit the different diverse of birds, man. Because not only can you eat beef, right, and sheep and, and goats, but you also can eat the bird, man. Now, what makes the bird clean and what makes it unclean? Right, we're gonna dive into it. So you have characteristics of what makes it clean. Now we're going to go into it. If brothers can see this, I'm on, um, it's a, it's a website that says Bible Answers and Study. Now, it says, from this list of unclean birds, Six characteristics have been identified as separating the clean birds from the unclean birds. So the Lord is going to list a plethora of things. So when you see it say that you're not supposed to eat the bald eagle, you can't just look at the bald eagle and just rest right there. It's just a bald eagle. No, bald eagle have different species of an eagle. They're different species of hawks. So each hawk isn't going to be that picture that you pulled up on the internet all the time, right? It's going to be a diversifier of different things, just like pigs. There's some pigs that have hair. There's some pigs that have tusks. They may change their appearance. You have, may have some Israelites that's extremely light, man. Look damn near white. You can have some Israelites that look damn near African. But their blood and what's within them and their spirit makes them clean. You have to identify and go and rightly divide what makes a bird clean, what makes a bird unclean. Now, within the clean birds, I'm going to read this again. For the list of unclean birds, six characteristics have been identified as separating the clean birds from the unclean birds. A clean bird has a craw or a crop. So you may ask yourself, what's a crop? I never heard of a crop. Well, that's going to it. Now, a crop is a pouch where a bird would literally have its food. That's going to it. This is a crop. It said the crop, also known as the N. gallivis, is a muscular pouch located on the front of the bird's neck. So you may see uh, that that puffy part on a bird. That would be, you know, his crop above the top of his chest or sternum. Check that out. 
Now we're gonna go to some images real fast. And that crop. This is a crop. Like you would see turkeys, they had that crop. They're clean animals. You understand? You see chickens, they have that crop. They're clean animals. Not all birds that have the crop are necessarily clean, but nevertheless, there's an attribute and things that they have to identify them as being clean. You have a crop. <clears throat> and birds are extremely tiny, so you can kind of look within their system and see what's going on. Also, a clean bird has a gizzard with a double lining, which can be easily separated. So you have gizzards. Let's look up that, what gizzards are. And you gotta be, uh, you gotta be addicted. Let me just say that. You gotta be addicted, man, in this thing. Stop just reading Esther all day and seeing if how tall Esther was and if Mordecai had a bad day in this chapter and you read it again, well, maybe he was confused. You read it again, try to get more in depth and, and deeper. Maybe he was dealing with depression and you link this up with Proverbs. Brother, dive into things you don't normally read. You know, as I was reading over the law again, and as you should always read, when this is counsel, Lord willing, brothers could take and sisters, you want to read it the first time, get an understanding, read it the second time, you may touch on names or touch on geography or touch on a parable within what you read. Then a third time, you may want to dive in and get more in depth, man. How many times, is this, what does this mean in the Hebrew? What is this talking about in the Greek? And as you read it over and over, don't stay on that surface level that you're on. Something as deep, so like if something as milk as uh, Leviticus 11 could be very in-depth when you go into it. So you have gizzards, right? The crop, then you got the gizzard. So certain clean animals, they possess these things, man, not all. You got the nasty owls and the nasty hawks and the nasty eagles and certain things. And predominantly the clean animals, they're on the ground. While the unclean animals, they fly. So you have a hawk, it's a predator, and it flies. You have the, uh, and we're gonna to touch on that too, Lord willing. You have, a clean bird is not a bird of prey. So you have certain things, let's go to it. Let's stop talking about it. Let's go to Deuteronomy, chapter 14. It's Deuteronomy chapter 14. All right, and let's start at uh let's start at verse number eleven. Of all clean birds ye shall eat, but these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle. Now the eagle, don't just look at this word eagle and say, Oh, the eagle. There are species of eagles, man, and they all look different. Now, we're not going to do an in-depth breakdown on the eagles, but just go to just to go to show you, this doesn't even look like an eagle. Certain things don't even look like eagles. When you see them, they'll look like certain other birds. But having an identified mind and zeroing in on these creatures, that everyone isn't going to look like this. A lot of the time, Jake's mind goes solely to this right here. Now, there's no precept I know in the Bible that says, oh, everything's going to be all right. Just try your best. The Most High is giving you grace and mercy, not only to go into prophecy, but also to dive into his law. Because what's going to identify the men, women, and children, you know, from the elect and the clean from them that are profane, that are in this for likes, in this for uh, vanity and a thousand precepts on Esau and a hundred thousand precepts to beat your, beat up your wife and a hundred thousand precepts to, to beat up your children and tell them how they're lazy. That, it's going to identify. Because when you're in the wilderness and you only have the spirit that the Most High gave you and the amount of knowledge that you accumulated, you want to make sure that you're making your best move 
your next move, your best move, man. Right now, we ain't going to do an end-up breakdown on the eagle. But nevertheless, the eagle, the osprey, which is a creepy, vicious predator, right? Looks like an eagle. And the osprey is the same, damn near the same thing. You can look it up. And the gleet and the kite and the vulture. And these things, they hover around. Like when you read scriptures like Revelation 19 and 19, the great slaughter, and all these different things all the way down, they eat flesh. You have certain animals that eat clean things, like chickens. Chickens eat clean things. Roll fast. Now, chicken eats fruits and vegetables and scraps and little things that they find on the ground, the corn. So you got to uh, you gotta identify what it is that these creatures eat too, which makes them clean and unclean. So you have what? A clean bird does not devour food while flying. So you have a chicken. What does a chicken do? You throw the little seed out there. You do his little pet. Get his little pet going, man. Then he step off proudly, right, in the cut somewhere, right? Then you have that eagle. He's just watching from on top of that mountain. He's zeroing in down on his prey. All right, let me go to the book. Let me go to the book of Job, man, real fast. Open up another window. Run out of windows. Go to the book of Job, chapter 39. It's the book of Job, chapter 39. And the most I told you about all these different creatures and the attributes that they have, right? You have certain animals, right? When you read Job, the 39th chapter, they, they bring a spirit behind them. Let's go to Job, chapter 39, and I start at... Um, 27. It says, Do if the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high. She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, and the strong places. And she does that because why? She could look at all of the prey. And you have different eagles that could pick up a whole damn goat, nah. They could pick up a whole sheep. They could pick up your child and take them right back into the mountains. So these things are prideful, they're strong, they look from afar off, just like Esau. He has a certain thing called goggles, man. He has certain things called infrared technology and radar and different things, and he watches you from afar, satellites. It says, from thence she seeketh the prey. Now the prey, predominantly, if it was a bird, would be probably a clean bird. You got quail, chicken, roosters. It says... And her eyes behold afar off, her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. Right, going back to the attributes real fast. A clean bird, hind toe, and middle front toe are both elongated. Check that out. So even how the animal bird's feet are, and how they literally uh, spread apart with three, or with two, or whatever the case may be, how the most I created them, how they're elongated can make and identify if they're clean too. It says, when a clean bird stands on a parch, it spreadeth its toes so that three front ones are on one side of the parch and the hind toe is in the opposite side. So even how they position their feet, man. And these articles aren't out for, for fun, man. You just look at them in your spare time. You, know, you got to make the Bible your business, man. Make the law your business. And the law isn't just pork, shrimp, fried lobster, fringes, and beard on your face, man. It gets more in depth when you go into it. Now, real fast. I want to touch on this real fast. Brothers can see my screen. Real well, I'm about to try to pull up what I wanted to before. It may not work. I'm about to come back to that. Let's 
a lot. Seems like it's only pages work. So like it, bear with me. Everybody see my screen? Right, so within this, in Deuteronomy, going back to Deuteronomy chapter 14 and going all the way down, you have all of these different birds. Now, the owl, obviously, you can't eat the owl. You can't eat the raven. You can't eat the vulture. But what may trip up a lot of brothers in this truth and sisters is when it gets down to the swan. Because the swan has different species of swan. Now, let's go into it real fast, what a swan looks like. This is a swan. Now, certain people say you can eat ducks. Certain people say you can't eat ducks. But through the spirit and through diving into the different species of swan, swan is nothing more than a duck. It's a different kind of duck. A, go a geese or a goose is a swan. A duck is a swan. It's all the same family. Now, on some Hebrew sites, they say you can eat certain things, you know, but you most definitely don't want to go into that. Now, is duck a part of the swan family? So a lot of people, you know, in the South, they eat duck, they eat frog, they eat anything, man. It says in the family of ants, they include the ducks and most duck-like waterfowls, which include ducks geese, and swans. So they're a part of the same family. So you can't be running around eating duck, man. You don't want to say, well, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't split the hoof. I don't know if it chews grass. How would I know if a bird is clean? Dive into it, man. See if it has a crop. See if it has gizzards. See if it devours its food in the air. See how it eats and what it eats. And dive into the different things that the most I'll put for swan. He didn't put swan and just left it there. And then you say, well, I read through the Ronnie in 14. I don't see duck. And then you just go off and start eating duck. Well, I don't see this creature and that creature. It's a such thing as species. So you got to dive into that even more. It's very important when you go into what you're going to eat. Right? It says all unclean birds lack at least one of these six characteristics. So when you go into these different species, you'll see that they're all not good to eat, man. You're going to mess around, and you're going to go off, man. You're going to go off, right? Now I want to touch on something else. I got to pull up each one of these articles and push it to the other page where you can see. Because it's not letting me go into this. Salaki, so bear with me. I can come back to this page and do it. Salaki, so bear with me. All right, so you have this site that I was trying to go into earlier called We Are Israel, where it has a lot of clean foods. Now, whoever put this site together, all praise to the Most High, but everything on this site isn't good. You have certain things that, you know, and we all we all, we all, all fall short. Whoever made this site, they had good intentions. But certain of the things that they say you could eat, you can't eat. That was just a little lack of understanding. But nevertheless, you know, you most definitely could use this and eat the meat and spit out the bones. It'll tell you clean animals that you the cud the esophagus, and the four different stomachs, and the rudiments. You have clean animals, the antelope, the bison, the cattle, the elk, the giraffe, the gazelle, the goat, the heart, the apex, the ibex. Now, ibex, I didn't get to, which falls into the same family as like a, uh, a ram or something. Let me get that real fast. Brothers may not know what an apex is. It's like a ram, a ram goat, right? Just to get a quick visual. You got the moose, you got the oxen, the reindeer, the sheep, 
in the line. Now, you got the boar, the pig, you know, going into the unclean things, all of these different animals that you're checking out, the alligator, the bear, things that are obvious. Now, don't get tripped up with the camel and the llama and certain creatures that may split the toe but don't have a hoof. Why you don't want to get tripped up in this thing? You want to make wise decisions in this thing, man. We'll go back to this quick article. So lock your bell with me. So within this, like I said, you got livestock of the world. You want to dive into that too. Now we got turkeys. Turkeys are clean. Got the gizzards right here. They don't devour their food in the air. They eat clean foods. These are certain attributes that you have to look at an animal until. Now, we're not going to go into all of these different turkeys, but, you know, turkey kind of diverse from a lot of different birds. You could kind of tell the difference between them. They got that big old fur, man, like a pimp in the 70s. Right? All that damn fur, man. Right, so you got all of the uh, different. You got the turkeys, man. You got the sheep. Now we ain't about to get. We ain't about to go back. About to go forward. But I wanted to pull something else up through the spirit to dive into it. All right, so lock your bell with me. I know it freezes every single time I go out, but we're gonna come back into it. Bear with me through the spirit. Right, Lord willing, brothers can see the screen. It's pulled up. I'm on YouTube. Uh -huh. At MedStar Health, we're proud the Capitals choose us for their medical care. We provide the same quality care to the Caps and their fans because every is built on trust. MedStar Health. All right, check this out. So Esau, our forefathers, they were hunters, man. Don't let Esau put this spirit on hunting to where he's the only one that can hunt. And Jake, you're too cool because you're too busy playing basketball and smoking weed. And on a damn porch, man. Get out there, man. Do, do some things if you got some money. Hey, the feast a tabernacles is coming up. If you got a little machete, just go out there and, and chop down a, a little branch or whatever, man. Get yourself together. Just get familiar with the outdoors because they're damn sure going to get familiar with you in the last days. You're going to have to not be able to have a shower. Uh, it's, it's certain things. And it's certain things if you watch certain videos, you can make clean water by having certain, uh, they have, uh, what are they called? Plastic containers like when you drink uh, so-called, what is it called? Like any soda or something. You can make yourself a filter system. You could pull up the swamp water. And I don't know what specifically they have off the top of the head, but they milk filter filter systems. And then by the time it's coming out, then they'll have it in another jar. And then it'll do it about three or four times until that water gets damn near white, man. And then you could drink it. And then you'll be okay. So, I mean, from barricading tents, chopping down woods, starting fires, and even hunting, man. Hunting is a main thing that you got to dive into. Look at Esau hunt. And if you know anything about deer, they can hear very well, man. And they'll be gone just like that when you pull up one. So you got to be very crafty when you're pulling up in the outdoor life to hunt. They have certain things when you change your camouflage. And the children of Israel change their camouflage in the Bible, man. Let me get this quick precept going into camouflage. So don't just think that Esau is the only one that could camouflage himself. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 14. 
This first Samuel chapter 14 and verse, I'm not going to read too much. You know, I'm not going to try to read too much. Let's see if I can get this quick free so Bear with me. Right. First Samuel. Uh, I don't want to read too much. I'm going to start at 11. It's First Samuel chapter 14 and verse 11. It says, And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. So what do you mean they was hiding themselves? They were hiding themselves in camouflage. When you hide, you don't hide like this. You put your cap backwards, man. You put a cigar in your mouth. You're very crafty and cunning. You know, children of Israel, they was on the ground. It was like all that army tactics and, and Navy SEALs. And, they're getting all of that from the Bible, man. They're taking it all from our forefathers. Don't just think everybody just yelled charge in the ancient world and everybody just ran and just died on their swords and fought. When you read Joshua, the eighth chapter, Joshua went out by night. He hid himself. He disguised himself. When that woman wanted to come in before David, what did she do? She changed her raiment in 2 Samuel, the 14th chapter. What happened in 1 Kings, you understand the 14th chapter? Going into Ahijah, how that woman disguised herself when she came before the prophet. But the prophet and the man of the Lord, he already knew what the deal was. So disguising yourself is all in the scriptures. It says, the Hebrews came forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us, for we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, come up after me, for the Lord have delivered them into the hand of Israel. How did the Most High deliver them? By what, obviously the hand of Yahweh Shah and the angels, but through our craftiness. You got to have some type of works in order for faith. To, to weigh on you. You just can't walk in the wilderness and say, I have faith. And then just things are just going to start moving and happening for you. You're going to see a tent, smoky fire, pillows, chickens, and all type of clean foods laid out. And a woman out of nowhere. A woman, she, she got a towel right here. A seven woman, she'll cleave to. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like that, man. You got to, you got to, okay, well, the Mosai said this. Okay, the Mosai said that. All praise to the Most High. You put down that mustard seed, the Most High is going to have an innumerable amount of fruit. Let me get a, another quick priest up on camouflaging yourself. So, I mean, when you go to hunt out there, if you can, you had the native, so-called Native Americans, they, they wore that buffalo bison, huh? And they put the head of those bisons and those creatures over top of them as they sat. And then when creatures came forth, they went out to attack. Or they would stay in trees. And all of that's going into different tactics. It's the book of 2 Samuel. Right? 2 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 2. And Joab sent Tilka and fetched thence a wise woman and said unto her, I pray thee, fern thyself to be a mourner and put on now mourning apparel, meaning change your raiment. Put on different clothes. You may have garments you put on for mourning, like the Day of Atonement. You may have garments you put on when you're stepping out with your woman. You want to look fly. You may have garments you put on to visit your damn grandmother, man, to put on her sweater that she bought you two years ago that's been in the closet. And you may have another raiment you put on to go hunting, man. Hey, didn't Jacob fern himself with the hair and change his raiment and how he disguised himself to be very crafty, man. You got to be crafty. And Lord willing, we all have the spirit of a survivor in those days and not a spirit of just, ah, what do I do? You see a little squirrel run up the tree and, and, and then you turn into uh, Nebuchadnezzar, man. Your, your nails grow out and you get hairy and you start to go off. It says, and anoint thyself with oil, but be as a woman that have a long time mourning for the dead. Check that out. So she changed what she was doing. You understand? Let me get this quick priest up in Genesis.
It's Genesis chapter 25. Right? And I'm going to start at this quick precept. It says, And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So what did Esau have? Esau was hairy. And our foremother, she knew that. So as she gave Jacob counsel, what did she do? Let me get this quick precept, man. Now, this is the book of Genesis chapter 27 and 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him. And he said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. So Isaac was old. He didn't really know too much of what's going on. He could hear a voice, but my son wouldn't deceive me. It wasn't that he was old and naive and he just fell off. He had a different spirit. When you get older, your, your mind doesn't work the same. You're not as sharp or care too much in certain matters. You start to put a lot more trust in your family and things like that. You're not thinking your, your, uh, your so-called grandson is going to spit in your water. When you ask him to go get some from downstairs, it says, and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother's Esau hands, so he blessed them. So all of this goes into what? Camouflage. If Esau know how to camouflage, how much more the children are like, bro? So Esau is hunting in the wilderness, man. And they have these these expensive bow and arrows that shoot hundreds of feet. Look at that. So this is going to be the life in the wilderness. Rainy, snowy, muddy, by yourself, hard. These are the things that we're going to have to endure and go through. Right? Let me get this quick precept in Nehemiah. Matter of fact, let me get First Kings. Chapter 4. I'm going to get a couple more and close out. It's First Kings, chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 22. And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour and three score measures of meal. So provisions for one day is talking about food. So the food that Solomon had, he ate like a king, man. He ate the, the best that you could eat. What did Solomon eat? Ten fat oxen. Now, don't think it all was the American Angus, man. He had diverse different types of oxen. And that diverse taste brings that diverse meat, man. He's a king. So he's eating these things and 20 oxen out of the pasture. What is 10 fat oxen and 20 oxen out of the pasture? If you don't have any of the discernment, you would just think it's the same red oxen or same black oxen. These are diverse different oxen, which are breaking down to what we went over earlier in the lesson of different kinds of meats, man. Out of the pasture, now you have a word called fowl. Now don't just let it say, if the Bible said three three fowls. You just think they're all just turkeys. Now you got quail, which falls in the fowl. You have diverse chickens and different species of them that falls in the fowl. You have turkey, and they all have different meats and produce different gravies, man. Huh? You know? It says, out of the pasture, and a hundred sheep, different diverse sheep, beside hearts and roebucks. So Solomon, he had all of the different oxen. He had all of the different sheep. All of the different deers and the roebucks and the follow deer and the fatted cow. So as Solomon ate, he ate like a king. And all of these things are in the scriptures. Let me get this quick precept in Nehemiah. Chapter 5 and verse 17. It's Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 17 and it reads. Moreover, there was at my table 150 of the Jews and rulers. 
besides those that came unto us from among the heathen that were around about us, that were about us. Now, that which was prepared for me daily was one oxen and six choice sheep. Also, fowls were prepared for me and one in ten days sorts of all sorts of wine. So just like you have different types of wine, you got the, the white wine, the dry, the wet, you want to stand the pinard, the milo, you got all of these different, but they're all wines. The same way the Heavenly Father made all these diverse types of animals. Now, we want to get real deep and dive into it a little bit more because there are a lot of more animals that you can get into, man. Right? Let me get this real fast. In case brothers don't know. So you got clean and unclean fish. Now it may be easy for certain brothers to tell about the fish because they have a physical attributes. They have to have fins and they have to have scales. But in case you don't know, you know these are a lot of clean fish that you could dive into. All these different fish. Check it out. And check out weareisrael.org. And check out all the other links that you're seeing from this video and save them to your computer under your bookmarks. Or take the time as a saint in the last days to make a breakdown book and copy all of these things out. You can't say in that day you didn't know. And no one is not just looking at the videos and, oh, it's a new video. And you watch that the next day and the next day. And four to 12 months later, if we're still here, you forgot what you've learned and what the Most High is giving you. That's a lot of videos other brothers have made, you know, that are very great that you could check out and scribe out so that you can have not just the scribe, but to also give them to other brothers and sisters and to go over your notes. Check that out. You know? So you see these things, man. So we're not going to get too in depth with that right there. But nevertheless, right, I wanted to get this real fast. In the book of Job. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 12. It's the book of Job, chapter 12, right? And I'm going to start at verse number 7. It says, but ask now the beast and they shall teach thee. So the beast teach you multiple things because beast represent man on a spiritual level. And these different men, they may move crafty, they may move cunning, sly, poisonous. They may watch from afar off. They may be aggressive. They may be stubborn. They may be lowly and meek. So these different beasts, they have a spirit behind them. So the Most High wants you to study beasts. He wants you to study insects. He wants you to study these things. And the next one, when we get into it, Lord willing, I'm going to do it volume two. We're going to go into all the different herbs that you can eat. Because, I mean, our forefathers, they ate herbs. I'm going to go back to that. So when you're in the wilderness, you may say, well, you know, all right, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know, Ak. I don't see any animals. What do I do? Well, you have clean herbs that you can eat too, man. Every herb isn't poisonous or bad for you. Let's go to the book of 2 Maccabees chapter 5. In verse number 25, right? And it reads, Who coming to Jerusalem and pretending peace, right? For forbear to the holy day of the Sabbath. When talking to the Jews, keeping the holy day, he commanded his men to arm themselves. And he slew all the men, all them that were gone to the celebrating of the Sabbath. And running through the city with weapons slew great multitudes. So it's a massacre going on. Reading on, but Judas Maccabees and nine others that were there about withdrew themselves into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts. What does it mean Maccabees lived like a beast, man? That don't mean he was going off. That mean they actually fled into the wilderness to live like a beast. Beasts don't have shelter. They get rained on. Beasts don't have protection. They have to protect themselves. Beasts have to get it how they live, like they say, man. Ain't nobody chopping up macaroni and cheese and greens for a beast. You know what beasts have to do? They have to kill for their own food. 
Maccabees, those were real men, man. They lived in the wilderness like beasts. It says, with his company who fed on herbs continually. So what can have you to be able to eat in the last days is not only meat, but herbs. You don't want to just say, I don't I can't eat. What do I do? I see grass and, ah. and then you just dive and you just jump off a cliff where you end your life, man. And I'm led to believe, this is me speaking as a man, but Maccabees, he knew the law like the back of his hand, man. Because you can't be a, a fool for the Lord to be dealing with you. The Lord dwells with them that have wisdom. And for him to be in the wilderness with beasts and feeding on herbs, it says herbs continually, lest they should be partakers of the pollution. So you have different berries, you have different plants, you have honeysuckle berries, and you know, we not that's a whole different breakdown. I ain't trying to get in touch on too much in one video, but you got certain things you can eat, man. So as you're in the wild, you have to identify your surroundings. You have to see the beast, take on their attributes, look at the herbs, look at the axes, look at the tree, man. Look at the things around you that the Most High is giving you, not giving you to look at all day, but giving you to what? To survive. Going back to uh, Job chapter 12 and 7, but ask now the beast and they shall teach thee. So why did Judas Mac why did the Lord say Judas Maccabeus, they dwelt like beasts? Because the beast can teach you. And they dwelt just like the beast did. Because the beast can teach you many things. And the fowls of the air. And they shall tell thee. Because fowls tell you when it's a storm. Fowls tell you when a tide is coming in. Fowls tell you all oh, hell. Maybe a tornado. Maybe a damn blizzard coming. The fowls are going to speak. Or there's a massive slaughter. They're sitting up there and they're going in circles round and round about the slaughter. The fowls want to tell you things and the different insects, right? You may hear a different sound from a creature and you say, okay, well, it's, they're mating. Or you may hear something, there's an attack or it's a warning. Or These things aren't just making noises, man. These beasts aren't just doing certain things. You have certain men, you know, like they have a horseology. Like if you've seen the uh, full horseman breakdown I did, I went into horseology. How different one of these horses have a spirit. And horseology breaks down the different attributes of those horses. Now, the same thing within, you have these different trainers and domestic uh, animals and wildlife animals. They'll tell you, you know, when the monkey rubs his hands or when he scratches his head or when he beats on his chest, to get the hell out of there, man. Or when you see that lion, he's sitting up there, he's staring at you to not move or to do certain things. You got to take upon these these attributes and these different things that these creatures that they're doing, man, and not be ignorant. It says, or speak to the earth and it shall tell thee. And the earth tells you multiple things. And we're not going to get too deep about the archaeology and the findings and the zinc and the gold, but the earth can tell you things, man. You may have puddles and, and different wells in the ground to drink out of, different ponds and different herbs. And these things are for you, man. The earth was created for you. That's the second address. It says, and it shall teach thee and the fish of the sea, and they shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord have wrought this? So the Most High have wrought all of these things. And we have to take advantage of them in the last days to uncover the secrets, the mysteries, the breakdowns, the dietary laws, the survival tactics, and everything that's going to have us to survive in the last days. Let me read this again. It's like a Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 27. It says what? And Judas Maccabeus with nine others thereabout withdrew himself into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts with his company who fed on herbs continually, lest they should be partakers of the pollution. So they would rather eat herbs and plants and things that were clean that gave them energy that wasn't making them full and gave them that feeling that they wanted just so they could keep what the laws of the Lord. So that's, that's how we're going to get down in the last days, man. Don't have your mind weak and feeble to think you can eat anything and survive. I had to survive. I had to. You got grace, up. Huh? They don't think like that, man. And the Lord said in the book of Sirach, I don't got to get it necessarily, but don't say that there is an oblation all the time, man, because there may not be one. The Most High may not have mercy on you. Let me get this quick precept. Man. Let me get this 
This is the book assigned right, chapter 7, verse 9. Say not God will look upon the multitude of my oblations. And your oblations are your sacrifices. You may sacrifice thanksgiving and giving to the Lord and a peace offering. You may sacrifice a contrite heart. You may sacrifice forgiveness to the Most High. You smote upon your chest. Don't say that the Most High is going to look upon all your oblations. When I offer to the Most High, he will accept it. What if the Most High don't? What if this was your hour of temptation in the wilderness? And it wasn't even Esau. It wasn't even the guillotines. It wasn't even the prison camps. It wasn't even the war tactics and things for them to torture you. It was you not knowing the law, which was right in front of your face the whole time. And you eating of that forbidden food, which is going to destroy you and cast you down, huh? and utterly destroy you in the land of the living. And all you had to say within yourself is the most high will forgive me. Let me get this closing precept. And Lord willing, we could do a part two and we could dive into more, you know, um, war tactics as well as herbs and fish. You know, we uh, primarily it was about the cattle, you know, and the different diverse beasts. Let's go to the book of Revelation, the third chapter. It's the book of Revelation, chapter three and verse number two. Be watchful. So the most I commanded you to be watchful. This is one of my favorite precepts because you have to watch in all things. It isn't just watching your clock and what time you have work, man. It isn't just watching the Pacific prophecy. It isn't just watching your wife. It's watching everything. Man. Any watchman isn't just watching for war. He's watching that gate to see if it's feeble. He's watching the king to make sure he's safe. He's watching the town to make sure it's intact. He's watching the other over the hill to make sure war isn't on the rise. Watching is watching in all things. If you call yourself a watchman, you have to watch in these things. And strengthen the things which remain. What remains is what? Your spirit, your love that you have for the Most High, your family, the prophecy that you read, the parables that you dive into. Strengthen it up which remains within you that are ready to die. Because if you don't check on what it is that you should have been checking on, it could die off, man. What happens if you don't read for 19 years? You may forget the word heard. You're looking at it, heard, is it, is it here? Trying to figure out what that word means, man. Because you're not reading constantly and strengthening it up. And that's even in the world, man. Let somebody that's old not drive because they, they've been in the hospital. And then they driving after three years. They're putting their foot back on the gas pedal. They're trying to making a turn and tart, making it too sharp, letting the wheel go, you forget. And they even say in the world, use it before you lose it, man. I mean, use your muscles before they get wax and faint, and, and, and it's harder to lift things. Your bones become feeble. How much more on a spiritual level, man? You have to read every day, pray and fast, and go into these breakdowns and do what the Most High has commanded man to do, man. It says this, Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and repent. So you have to repent in these things, man. And the feast, so like you, the Day of Atonement is coming in, and the memorial blowing of the trumpets is passed, and the Feast of Tabernacles is coming in. So you had the memorial blowing of the trumpets, you had the Day of Atonement, and then you're going to have the Feast of Tabernacles. So all of these things are coming. If brothers don't know, prepare yourself. Repent and fast and get these things together. If therefore thou shalt not watch, and if you're not watching and diligent, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So if you're not watching, remain and diligent and doing all you can do as a man and woman of the Lord, the Lord is going to destroy you in the land of the living. So continue to watch, pray, and fast and hold yourself diligent. With that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Malak Yahweh Shah, Shalom.